Good morning, people. How are you doing? I am Scott. Bo is sitting down here looking at me, wanting me to take him outside again. Today is the 29th day of August, 2022. It is about quarter after eight in the morning in sunny Tampa, Florida. Today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about racism. We're going to talk about racism being used by people, by grifters, to try to feather their own nests and also to, do, to, to divide and conquer uh, a growing percentage of the population who is coming to understand, finally, uh, that maybe some of our institutions have been turned inward against us to use them for their own political fucking gains. Not just political gains, but also their business gains. We talked the other day, and something I've mentioned many, many times in the past, and we have to remember, even LaRouche's guy, fucking uh, Schlanger, uh, Harley Schlanger, even, even he understands and admits and talks about it. The problem here we're facing is the IMF, the World Bank, I showed you all of their influence taking place in the World Economic Forum and the fact that they're the ones who are behind all this with the power of the 2,000 fucking, or more than 2,000 major fucking corporations across the world. Um, this is their end game. They think they've put all the pieces in place and they've had 50 years since the fucking Lewis Powell memo to do so. Uh, and they fully expect a uh, return on their investment, just like all those 800 fucking corporations did when they were pushing for CISPA um, in the election of 2012. And of course, uh, they got what they wanted with, was it 2010? I don't know, it was back in those days. They got what they wanted with the help of someone named Edward Snowden and Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> It's not your government that's the enemy, uh, but they are being used. And so people are coming to the conclusion, um, and rightly so, that some of the intelligence agencies uh, have been weaponized and turned inward against us. It happened in 2015 when they were spying on the Trump campaign, um, the use of the Five Eyes program and GCHQ overseas and others, and the, and the FBI. The FBI had a, uh, a well-known mole they had used in the past, inserted into the Trump campaign, so he could spy on them from inside. Um, happened in 2020 when the FBI did their best to try to suppress the information about Hunter Biden's laptop uh, in the lead up to the election, because it would have had an effect, especially some of the things that are coming out now from that laptop would have had an effect on the election. So, of course, <coughs> they had to contact Facebook and Twitter and all these places. And in fact, uh, the owner of the laptop, they had to contact all these people and say, shut up, mum's a word, until after the election. They were influencing the election. Now, we can argue, one can argue, you know, it's not unipolar up there. In the great heavens of the fucking deep state, uh, there's not one agenda and one agenda only. There are competing agendas. So the question becomes, did Hunter Biden really, in a drunken stupor, leave his fucking laptop there and then forget about it? When this guy contacted him and contacted him and contacted him to come pick it up, knowing full well what was on it, ah, I doubt that. Meaning, a different agency. Maybe one who didn't want fucking Joe Biden to be the fucking president. Uh, uh, which means Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and that whole crew. Possibly. It's, it's, it, 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 you can argue it. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is, the FBI had been weaponized against us, and people who have in the past dismissed such claims are now having to come to that sobering realization. Um, so, of course, 
what do we have? We have certain folks in, I don't know, social media using race uh, to try to uh, break us apart and break those people apart. Here is something called Sandra Comrade at Lady Birth, three, six, four, two, random number, random number, random number. Um, she is, of course, a Black Lives Matter supporter, still Black Lives Matter supporter, and a trans rights are human rights individual calling for reparations, of course. Uh, interestingly enough, while I'm filming this and while I'm getting ready to fucking film this, up popped Black Lives Matter and Antifa on the trending thing on Twitter. What a coincidence. What does Sandra Comrade say here? She posts this meme with the guy from, uh, I, I don't know who the fuck he is. Everybody knows who he is. I don't know who he is because I didn't watch that stupid ass fucking show. Uh, but he says on here, or someone says in this fucking meme with him, Gus Fring, uh, in the picture, says, you hate the FBI because they searched clown Mussolini's mansion. I hate the FBI because they murdered Fred Hampton. We are not the same. And if you think I'm alone and saying that this is race baiting and this is divide and conquer bullshit, uh, there's plenty of others here who say the same fucking thing. Yes, indeed, the FBI killed Fred Hampton. Um, as you can see, here's one person who says, looking for differences in all the wrong places. Another person says, that's not coalition building. Uh, but we have to agree the FBI's got to go. Uh, uh, but when you want the same thing, then you have to work together on a specific political topic and not fucking try to divide and conquer based on the color of people's skin. <laughs> um, I, I, my issue with this is, is very simple. Um, again, you know, it's not only divide and conquer in terms of race, but also divide and conquer in terms of uh, politics. Clown Mussolini's mansion. Um, if you want a good breakdown on what happened with that, go over to my BitChute channel. Whether you're watching this from YouTube, go to my BitChute channel, or it's on YouTube too, I believe. And pull up this last video, one of the last videos here. Uh, it's entitled, Redacted Marlago Affidavit Shows the FBI Was After the FISA Documents in Lawsuit Against Clinton and the FBI. Why is that important? Well, here's the deal, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if it's shown to be proven that the FBI deliberately worked against a candidate in 2015, 2016, uh, with the intention of making sure that they weren't elected. That is against their charter. It is not just illegal, that is against their charter, their very existence could be threatened. Were that to come out in court and were people to fucking actually file lawsuits against them and present evidence that, I don't know, a former president of the United States would have access to and take out of the fucking White House with him. Um, that's what the FBI was doing. They kicked in his door and they went after that evidence and they got that evidence and they seized it, and I'm sure they have destroyed it by now, so that the lawsuit can't threaten the existence and how the FBI is being run at this moment as a tool of the fucking establishment. Listen, <laughs> it's not just Trump. It's not... What's his fucking face? Tucker Carlson will tell you all day long, again, more divide and conquer bullshit, that all they want to do is keep the Democratic Party in power. <laughs> You'll realize soon enough um, that that's not really the case. Uh, they will find somebody like they did with Bush and Bush Sr. And they will find somebody who will do their fucking bidding. Trump did their fucking bidding to some degree, 
but still he ran as a populist. And after what they did in 2020, they really have no idea what he'll do in 2024, if he's even serious about running again. But remember, kicking in his door was not about keeping him from running. It's about keeping him from filing a lawsuit and threatening the very existence or the way the fucking FBI is being run today. <laughs> they would have done the same thing had it been Bernie Sanders. Had Bernie Sanders not been the sellout that he was, had Bernie Sanders not stood up there and held fucking Hillary Clinton's hand up in the air on stage at a fucking rally, which the only reason she could actually get a few people out the rally is because Bernie Sanders was going to be there. And Bernie Sanders holds her, holds her hand way up high and says he doesn't want to hear about those damn emails anymore. <laughs> had that not been what Bernie Sanders was, if he hadn't been a sellout, if he had continued with his populist left message, which, by the way, was very similar to the populist right message of Donald Trump and both candidates back in 2015 happened to mention that, by the way. Had it been Bernie Sanders who had decided to do away with fucking and, and, and just run over fucking Hillary Clinton like he was going to and should have. Um, and they were running, I don't know, uh, Jeb Bush at the time against him. Then the FBI, even though it was being controlled by Barack Obama and the Barack Obama administration, would have gone after Bernie Sanders. Why? because it's the idea of populism that they hate so much. A long time ago, a couple of years back, I pointed out that there was this article written, and I forget exactly who did it, but uh, they said, oh my God, the rise of populism. We gotta work on this. The definition of populism is running a government for and by and of the population. You look after the interest of the populist as opposed to the oligarchs and big business. And they don't like that idea. It's not conducive to big profits for their fucking real donors. Their real constituents. So, of course, that's why they did that to Donald Trump. It had nothing to do with whether he was red or blue. That's a fucking artificial divide. <laughs> it was Hillary Clinton's time in 2015. And then in 2020, uh, be honest... Trump fucked up and started talking about stolen elections. Um, and they weren't going to have that. They also weren't going to have fucking Joe Biden fucking beaten that easy by a fucking laptop from his son, which not only pointed out his flaws, but also the corruption of his father. Now, we know his father's been corrupt all this fucking time. We, we understand that. That's not a shock to anybody. But the, the laptop was, just like Hillary Clinton's 33,000 missing emails that James Comey and the FBI uh, allowed her to fucking evaporate, uh, which is, each one of those is a felony. That's 33,000 felonies, boys and girls. She should never have been allowed to fucking use her own private server. So she could do that. Get rid of sticky fucking facts that would cause her problems in the future. But they allowed her to do that. They let her get away with it. Uh, very problematic. Again, that's the FBI. I wanted to, because of the nature of this racist crap, um, I wanted to maybe try to uh, illuminate some more of the history for old Sandra here, if she's got a problem, uh, if she wants to hate the FBI. She hasn't got to go back 50 fucking years, 50 plus years. 52? She hasn't got to go back 52 fucking years, I'm sorry, 51 fucking years to the, 2000, to the 1969 murder of Fred Hampton. There's a lot of fucking events that have taken place since then. I'll give you a couple. Maybe four. Now, for Sandra here, she might disregard some because they involved 
people who are white being victimized. But not all. Now, maybe, Sandra, we'll get into one because one of the people, several of the people who were killed might have been white, but they were actually women. I'm talking about, in this case, a guy by the name of Lon Hirushi. Lon Hirushi was a sniper trained by the U.S. military. And Lon Hirushi uh, was a straight-up killer. He was a sniper uh, on the FBI's hostage rescue team. And there's a guy by the name of Charles Riley, who was uh, a former FBI sniper, who claimed he heard multiple shots taking place from this position called Sierra One at Waco. They were just sitting there sniping people coming out of the compound at Waco after it was set on fire by the DEA and whoever else set it on fire. Uh, I think 26 children burned to death uh, in that fire. A bunch of others did as well. And apparently, an FBI sniper broke the fucking blue line of silence, the blue wall of silence, because he was so offended by what Hiroshi and Christopher Karam were doing on April 19th, 1993. And that was shooting women and children as they left that burning fucking compound in the back. And that, boys and girls, is a fact. Yes, they were white, mostly white. However, Sandra, many of them were women and children. Now, Lon Harushi, this individual here, this gentleman, trained by the U.S. Military Academy in 1976, member of the FBI hostage rescue team, that wasn't the only time he shot women and children. At Ruby Ridge in 1992, a year prior, he was at Sierra 4, the FBI hostage rescue team position at Ruby Ridge. And it was his rifle that shot and killed the wife of Randy Weaver, Vicki Weaver through a door that was closed when she was unarmed and holding her infant son. FBI hostage rescue team. <laughs> they also shot and wounded her husband, Randy Weaver, and someone named Kevin Harris. Don't know who he was. I think he was someone who was up there to try to negotiate an end to that standoff. Uh, I can't tell you whether or not the 10-month-old boy was actually killed, um, but I don't, I don't think he was. Shot her through a door holding her baby. That gentleman right there. Also shot and killed multiple people leaving the fucking compound, trying to escape the fire that was set by the authorities on purpose to drive them out. That's something the FBI did, Sandra. And that was not 51 years ago. Now, you might not give a shit because they were white. How about somebody who wasn't white? How about this guy? He might look whitish, but he's uh, from the uh, Caucasus, I guess. But he's still a minority, I suppose. This is his father holding up pictures of this man. This is Tadayachev. I can't even try to pronounce his uh, 
Tadashiv, Tadashiv. This was the friend of the two people who were accused of being Boston bombers. One of them was still alive, the other one was driven over by a truck, naked. No one explained why he was naked. That was the older brother. Um, they were trying, the younger brother, Sarnev brother, I think, is, a, is their name. And they were trying to put together a case. And it would have been very helpful if they had had their close friend provide state's evidence and say, oh, yeah, he was doing it. Oh, I saw a bomb. Oh, I saw this. Um, but apparently he wouldn't. And he was beaten, as you can see, from the bruises all over him and his face. And then, in the end, he was beaten here. He had some kind of marks here. This is the FBI interrogating him. They had asked, they, they, the FBI had local police with them, and they sent the local police out. They had gone to this guy's home in Florida. And they wanted a strong fucking witness to say, yes, I saw a bomb in his house. The fucking brothers, the Sarnev brothers did not do it. But that's the FBI for you. He was shot twice. You see the two holes in his head, pop, pop. Double tap to the head while he was handcuffed. Now, the shots entered the top of his head. Implying that he was either still sitting at the chair where they were interviewing him after beating him, or at that point he was on his knees. One of those two things happened. Because you don't get fucking powder burns and you don't get two shots that close together if the dude is rushing you with his head down as they try to claim. They also lied and said he had a gun. They also lied and then said he didn't have a gun, he had a sword. Then they lied and said that there was no sword, it was a broom. That's what they did. They tortured this guy, tried to get him to permit to, to produce false testimony against his own friends. And when apparently he refused, and they got fed up with him, that's what they did. That's the FBI. Again, <laughs> you don't have to go back 51 years, Sandra, Um, there's more recent information. Now, this is what they did recently. Um, it was before that interview. The FBI used to have to record either audio or both audio and video all of their interviews as they became more and more fucking criminal and corrupt they did away with that rule here you go right here this is from the hill this is from I don't know what the fucking date is because they don't tell you the fucking date I guess cat please shut the fuck up why the FBI doesn't record interviews I'm sorry this was uh, 2020 but it's they did they didn't record this interview clearly they were supposed to. This is how it ended up. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> My guess is back then, uh, they were doing what a lot of officers do who are corrupt. And that is they have to wear the fucking uh, body cams. And if some shit happens that they don't want out there, they say, oh, well, the body camera wasn't working. Oh, it was turned off. Oh, whatever. It's, that doesn't exist. <coughs> That could have been the case with this guy. But I don't, I think when I covered this a long time ago, in 2013, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, in 2013, I think that um, I remember when I was covering it and writing about it, that uh, they had already passed that rule that they don't have to record interviews anymore so they could torture people. Now, maybe that started way back when way back when uh, TWA flight 800 was shot down and I say that knowing full well that some people will contradict me nope 
it was shot down. And it was shot down by accident. There's actually a video out there now from somebody who was actually one of the two cruise missile destroyers who were on maneuvers that day um, who talked about it. And the fact that, and, and I don't know what happened to that interview, what happened to that video, it seems to be gone now. Of course it is. There's a good um, documentary made about TWA Flight 800, and it's gone now. You can't find it hardly anywhere. Um, but they covered a lot of aspects of this, including the FBI aspect. And one of them, a lot of the interview, a lot of the witnesses, now I was living in New York at the time, so we heard a lot of local news broadcasts about this when it happened. This is 97, I think. Um, 96, 1996. We heard a lot of local news broadcasts. And a lot of the local, local news broadcasts um, sought out the witnesses. Uh, 102 of them, actually. Because you have to remember, this was right off the coast of New York, uh, Long Island, and it was a nice day. It was on the beach. Um, so there were people out there. This is 1996. So there was no cell phone cameras. But there were a lot of people out there. And 102 of them said they saw a missile hit that fucking plane. Come up off of the fucking water, which is roughly where the goddamn cruise missile destroyers were. <coughs> and hit the plane. Detonate right next to the fucking plane. They, it looked like it hit it because it went up beside it and detonated The FBI couldn't have that. That's bad press. That's a lot of fucking money. So the FBI is called in to come in and take over the investigation, which is belongs to the NTSB, by the way. But the FBI inserted themselves into it so they could eventually come to the conclusion, as the New York Times tells you in November of 1997, that there's no sign of a crime. It was an accident. There's no evidence of a criminal act. If you go back and watch that video, that documentary, there's actually the head fucking the lead investigator from the NTSB who says they caught FBI officials in the evening in the fucking warehouse where they were putting together and reconstructing the fucking plane from the pieces that they had trying to figure out what happened. They caught FBI officials leaving with key pieces of evidence. They stole it. They stole it. There's also reports from some of the 102 eyewitnesses who stated in the documentary that as they were talking to the press, which I mentioned to you before, the local fucking channels and all these people were out there, as they were talking to people, the FBI came along and said, we got to talk to you right now. The FBI, they had nothing to do with the case at the time. Nothing. Officially, it was NTSB until the NTSB determines that there was a criminal act that took place. They had nothing to do with it. But they were taking the fucking witnesses, according to witnesses, and being sat down for an interview. Interview. And they were being told Okay, what did, what did you see? What did you see? What did you see? And they start telling them what they saw about the fucking rocket flying up and the, and the thing flying up and detonating right next to the fucking plane or hitting the plane. And they said, no, you didn't see that. No, you didn't see that. You're not reporting that. You're not, you didn't see that. That's what the FBI did. Now, Sandra... 
Um, don't know how many African Americans were on flight 800, TWA flight 800. I'm sure there were some. So maybe you can get behind that one. Maybe you can get behind that one. But my guess is you probably can't because that was 1996. And Bill Clinton was in the office. However, um, I'm sure there were some African American families who could have benefited from knowing exactly why their fucking beloved ones died and maybe even benefited. You talk about reparations, unless, of course, you're just doing that for effect, divide and conquer effect. But you talk about reparations, I'm sure there were numbers of family members who would have been better off if we understood what actually took out Flight 800 <coughs> and being compensated appropriately. This was so obvious that the FBI was doing this in order to protect the Department of Defense. Again, it's not about left and right boys and girls. A journalist was arrested. He had somehow come in contact with, gotten his hands on, some of the fabric from that left side of the plane that had explosive residue on it. Fabric from one of the chairs, I believe, one of the seats. Some of the same stuff that had been stolen by the FBI, by the way. Um, it's a great documentary. You should go watch it. <coughs> the FBI came along and arrested him. Sanders had been under FBI investigation since last May. This is from 97. When he revealed that he had come into possession of some fabric from one of the TWA jet seat cushions, according to claims he made that or reported in the Riverside, California Press Enterprise later in his own, and again later in his own book, The Downing of Flight 8, TWA 800, The Shocking Truth Behind the Worst Airplane Disaster in History, Sanders had the fabric sample tested by an independent lab. He claims the results revealed the sample contained explosive residue from a missile. And so what does the FBI do? Who ends up saying this? Oh, no crime. The FBI arrests him. I don't know what happened to him after that. I don't know what kind of interrogation they had with him. Uh, hmm, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's see. That kind of interrogation, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I guarantee you they didn't record the conversation. So again, you don't have to go all the way back 51 years to what happened to Fred Hampton. Obviously, what happened to Fred Hampton was a fucking tragedy. You can go back maybe a year before that and ask about what happened to, I don't know, Martin Luther King, perhaps. <coughs> they were involved in that as well. Let me tell you one more thing about the interrogations. Um, and this is also a fact. I, why is this doing this? Okay. Hang on one second. In the early days of the investigation, right after... Uh, President Kennedy was murdered, was assassinated. Um, Lee Harvey Oswald's wife was saying he was a patsy. Lee Harvey Oswald's wife, Lee Harvey Oswald, Oswald's wife, was saying the picture was fucking doctored. That famous one with him holding a newspaper and the fucking rifle. Uh, then the FBI took her. And they kept her for 30 days. And when she came out, she had to give a, a hostage fucking video, make a hostage statement in front of the press, in which she said, yes, my husband did it. He hated the president. They held her for 30 fucking days and turned her into a Stepford wife for the fucking murderous bastards who actually did that to her. Um, to 
her husband and to the President of the United States. Uh, that was the early days. So if you want to go back, we can go back even further than that, if you like, than Fred Hampton. Of course, apparently you only care about people of color, so to speak. But you can go back. And I guess I will leave you with this, since we're talking about people of color, and since that apparently is all San Sandra Comrade, whatever fake shit she is, that's all she cares about. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about people of color. Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Can the federal government take credit for saving us from a plot of its own creation tonight? Has the federal government kept us safe, or does it just want us to think that it has kept us safe? Since the tragedy of 9-11, numerous crazies and low-level copycats have engaged in criminal behavior which they hoped would result in the, death, the deaths of innocent Americans and somehow advance their cause of jihad. If you ask the leadership of the FBI, most of whose field agents are tireless, dedicated, constitution-supporting professionals, it will tell you that it, the FBI, has foiled about 17 plots to kill Americans during the past 10 years. What it will not tell you is that there have been 20 foiled plots, and of them, three were interrupted by members of the public. The 17 that were interrupted by the feds were created by the feds. The FBI has been in the process, in the, in the business of creating terrorist plots for themselves to foil uh, since the early days after 9-11. Um, Judge Napolitano back in 2013 pointed out the first 17 that the FBI had taken fucking credit for and said, aha, we stopped these dirty terrorists uh, in their tracks. And he points out the fact that they fabricated those things. They used fucking... Uh, they use fucking uh, undercover agents. They use fucking uh, people that they had paid, criminals that they had paid uh, to generate these plots with poor, usually not too bright individuals. Um, and they fabricated them. They gave them a plot. They gave them a plan. They gave them some fucking weapons. Sometimes they had to give them a fucking car or bus ticket so they can get back and forth. Uh, they even put words in their mouths sometimes. Um, in some cases, uh, the plotters who were going along with it because they were getting paid and they had food for the first time. I mean, these were, these were people who were way on the fringe. Um, they went along with it for a while. And then when it actually came down to, okay, here we go, we're going to do a fucking thing with a bomb, uh, they were like, mm, I don't think so. And they arrest them right at that moment. Uh, because they had decided, not, no, this is fucking, I'm not doing that. I'm not blowing people up. Anyway, um, that's what the FBI also did, or part of the FBI. Like Napolitano tells you, this is not all of the FBI. It's a part of it. And uh, in terms of this thing that Sandra dismisses, uh, this raid on, the F, the, on, on Trump's fucking Mar-a-Lago, <laughs> maybe you should be concerned about that. Maybe everyone should be concerned about that, even if they're upset about Fred Hampton and they don't think any of the other shit matters, including the fact that many of those people who were arrested or set up were entrapped by the FBI and then arrested and some put away for life and some the judges tossed the fucking thing all the way out. Some of those people were Muslims from outside of the country, were brown, and some uh, were black people of color from here within the United States. You should think about that. Um, but when you consider the fact that if, in fact, what I said, and what I theorized from day one, by the way, is, you know, as soon as this thing happened, I wrote about this and did a video about this, saying, I wonder if that's what they were actually after. <laughs> think about this. This is not the entire FBI, but this is a faction within the FBI. And I wonder if that faction within the FBI, for purely self-preservation reasons, not to influence an election this year coming up, but for purely self-preservation reasons, did not want this stuff to come to light. 
had it come to light, maybe we could then begin to actually expunge the parts of the FBI that are so fucking criminal and so fucking crooked and so fucking corrupt uh, that we could eventually end up, I don't know, uh, getting a real understanding of what happened to flight TWA 800. Maybe we could get a real understanding of what happened to the Boston bombing. Maybe we could get a real understanding of what happened to all those people who were busted in those now way more than 17 fabricated terrorist plots and perhaps even maybe I don't know, uh, let some of those people out of prison. Some of those people who just happen to also be people of color. And maybe, just maybe, uh, depending on how far back you go in terms of the history, you can get some real justice for Fred Hampton. If, and only if, uh, you don't divide people who are now coming together on this false left-right bullshit fucking narrative um, or on the basis of race. You get enough people motivated and talking about this shit um, and you might get some, you might see some fucking change. You might see someone somewhere in the news talking about this shit other than just Tucker Carlson. They didn't bother. This is what the FBI has become. An agency that seeks to exert control over the information that you read in the media. <laughs> Again, and I can't stress this enough. <clears throat> yes, trying to influence elections is against the charter of the FBI and is against the Constitution of the United States. And um, it would pose serious problems for the people in the FBI. Trying to cover up disasters like what happened at TW800 or trying to frame people of a certain religion in order to continue the idea that there's you know, the, the, the evil Muslim threat is out there now trying to frame people of being white supremacists. Um, these are also crimes. And in some ways worse, in some ways not worse. But these are also crimes. The crimes of the FBI are colorless. So we shouldn't fucking color them in. We have to remember that we are all in this together. And thankfully, a lot of people who are leaving comments on Sandra's fucking meme are saying the same thing. Uh, this is a struggle. It's going to be a struggle. And we're talking about, I'm talking about right now, an institution that kills fucking witnesses. At will. Um and kills civil rights leaders. Uh, it needs to stop. It needs to be reformed. Um, again, there are some good people working in the FBI, uh, and they do some good uh, for the country. This is, we're talking about a faction. We're not throwing out the baby with the bathwater here, but that faction needs to be exposed and removed, and we have to stop fucking trying to divide the resistance against it in order to weaken the resistance. My name is Scott, that is Bo, and now I have to take him for a walk. And I thank you very much. Um, for those of you who are still here, I am still going to do the live streaming thing. I think Thursdays will be the political one and Tuesdays will be a gaming one. Uh, there's just no good games right now. So... But I'm going to work on that and try to get that set up and try one this Tuesday. I think 8 p.m. for me is good. Um, and that's 8 p.m. Eastern time. But we'll see. My Twitch stream thing is listed down below. You can find it down there. And I thank you all very much for your time. That is Bo. And there goes Bo. And here comes Bo. You want to get up here and get in the video today? Come here. Come here, come here, come here. Get in the video today. So we can go for the bow grift. Bow, come here. What? What? Willie, really? you gotta do an entrance. 
You are such a diva. Just come here, bro. I got control of my dog. How many toys you got? Come here, get up here. Get up here. Ow, ow. Can you see him? Yeah, there he is. What do you got? How many toys you got? You got a lot of toys. You got three? Did you actually bring three toys? This is what he's got. This is, this is what he does to toys. He just fucking shreds them. He just shreds them. So I gotta get him a new toy today. I gotta go to the store and get him a new toy today. Right? Right. Froggy. Mm. Boom! He is so fucking big, man. Look at the size of his head compared to mine. <laughs> but he is a pansy. He is just a big baby. He's just a big baby. Who's a big baby? <laughs> no, not me. You. Pets are just like their parents, Scott. That means you're a big baby, too. Yeah, right. Stop telling people that shit. This is the only contact. I don't have any human contact. I just have cats and my dog. Who's my boy? Who's my boy? You want to go outside? Huh? He's so excited. All right, we got to go outside. I thank you guys very much for your time. Uh, Sandra, I'm not really being all that fucking rough on you, but seriously, seriously, just, just stop with that fucking race baiting shit. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.